Okay, so welcome to the revision session on this part of your Unit 1 exam. This will appear in the Unit 1 Living with the Physical Environment exam, first exam. It will be in Section A, Challenge of Natural Hazards, and the, it will be in the Tectonic Hazards section of that uh, section. Okay, the key um, idea that over um, covers over this uh, that covers this part is that earthquakes and volcanoes are the result of physical processes. So earthquakes and volcanoes don't happen for no reason. They happen for um, very good reasons and you need to be able to explain those. OK, well, you've seen lots and lots of maps like this over time. This is a, a map of the world. The blue dots are earthquakes and the red triangles are volcanoes. And as you'll see, these appear in patterns around the world. So if we look at the Pacific Ocean, we can see it here and the other side here. So we see the Earth wraps around. All around the edge of the Pacific Ocean, we can see very heavy concentrations of volcanoes and earthquakes. And that's the Pacific Ring of Fire. All up the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we can also see lines of volcanoes and earthquakes particularly up here so here's us in the UK we're on this big area here which has volcanoes and earthquakes all around the edge of it and that area that piece of the earth's crust is known as the Eurasian plate and that what that's what we're on right now okay so hold those in your head you're gonna we'll come back to that as we um, look at this topic Right, you need to be able to talk about the plate tectonic theory. So, plate tectonic theory. You need to be able to talk about this. Now, the plate tectonic theory explains why there are pieces of the Earth's crust that move around the um, earth surf on the Earth's surface. So this piece of crust here that we're on, the Eurasian plate, is moving very slowly that way. And this piece of crust here, the North American plate, is moving very slowly this way. And this piece of the Pacific plate, the Pacific plate, which is very big, is very slowly moving this way. So there's a massive amount of movement and the plate, te plate tectonic theory tells us why. This will form the basis of all the answers to your questions on physical processes because without this theory nothing else makes sense. Okay, This is the underlying reason why plates move. So we have the Earth's core. There's an inner and an outer core but for this theory what we need to know is it's very, very hot. Um, it's made of metal. The inner core is solid. The outer core is liquid. But as far as um, the plate tectonic theory goes, the key thing is it's very, very hot. The layer above this is called the mantle. So if I draw this in, this is the bulk of the Earth. I'm just going to write down that that's the mantle. And then above that is a very, very thin layer, which is the Earth's crust that we live on up here. OK, now the mantle is made of rock and the crust is made of rock. But the mantle is very, very different. Um, if you think, if you had a, a, a toffee or um, a wham bar or chew bar in your pocket, and you t you've been in there for a couple of hours, you take it out to, to break it in half and share it with a friend. If you tried to bend it um, and break it and pulled, it would flow and it would stretch. And that's what the rock in this layer is like because it's next to something warm, just like that in your pocket. It's next to the hot core. So this is um, soft and it flows like warm toffee so that's the mantle so this great big layer here is made of flowing rock the crust um, the rock at the crust 
is hard and it is brittle so the at the um on the outside there the rock will snap and break um and it is what we see right so let's explain why bits of this crust are moving in different directions um okay next to the core mantle rock made of rock it warms up maybe this area here warms up and the rock expands, it becomes less dense, and it starts to rise. So if we put here, uh, warm or hot rock rises. I'm gonna put less dense there. But you don't have to include that. So up it rises, and at the top, it's forced to each side because of the crust. So it's forced to each side. Now, as it's away from the Earth's core, what happens is it starts to melt. Uh, sorry, it starts to cool. <laughs> Not at all melt. It starts to cool, and as it cools, it contracts, becomes more dense, and then it moves back down towards the core, where it moves in each direction, heats back up, and starts its journey again. So the same thing is happening here. Move to the side, heats up enough, rises up, is forced to the side, cools down, comes back down. So we end up with areas where rock is rising and areas where cooler rock is falling. And this happens all around the world and we see the evidence for this. Okay. So, there we go. Now these areas of rock cycling around very, very slowly, these are called convection currents. And these are the reasons why the plates are moving. This is the plate tectonic theory. So as this rock rises and then is forced underneath the crust, the crust moves with it. So the idea is that from this point, this part of the crust is going to be moving that way. And this part of the crust, if you have a look at the arrows, is moving this way. There it goes. Now, this part of the crust <laughs> is actually moving this way. So the area above it will be moving in that direction. And this area here, if you have a look, is moving in that direction. So if we think about the edges where these different cells, these different convection currents are meeting, we have places where the plates pull apart. And more of that later. And we'll have places where the plates, the pieces of crust, push together. And these locations here, here, here. This is where all the action is happening. And if we go back to that map, these are the places where we see earthquakes and volcanoes at the edge of these boundaries. And that is the plate tectonic theory.